This presentation will show how the RockWorks 15 program may be used to model and visualize contaminant plumes based on downhole well information. The topics that will be covered are shown within this outline. We'll start with an overview of the program with special attention being given to data entry and import, data management, modeling, visualization, and volumetrics. Next, I'll briefly show a recently completed case study at the Denver Federal Center that illustrates some of the capabilities described within this overview. Finally, I'll demonstrate how the program is used to model and visualize contaminant plumes. RockWorks consists of two major categories of applications. The first category involves subsurface or well-based data management, analysis, and visualization via a relational database. The second category is a collection of miscellaneous applications or utilities that process data that is contained within simple row and column tables. Given the time allotment for this presentation, I'll omit 90% of what's in RockWorks and instead focus on subsurface or well data management with particular attention being afforded to stratigraphy, or more accurately, hydrostratigraphy, and time-based geochemical modeling. Now, the program does, of course, allow for straightforward manual data entry. In this screenshot, we see the three major data entry sections. On the left is where we specify a well name. In the center, we pick the type of data to be entered or examine such as location information, lithology, stratigraphy, etc. The remainder of the screen contains a row and column table for entering information for the currently selected data type and highlighted well. All of these data tables include capabilities for importing data via the Windows copy paste clipboard utilities. But more commonly, at least in environmental and geotechnical projects, we're dealing with projects that already have client data. For this reason, RockWorks provides a variety of data import utilities. The red arrows in this slide highlight important options that are frequently used to import environmental data. ADO, or Active Data Object, is a Microsoft scheme for universal data exchange between disparate data sets. ASCII, or American Standard Code for Information Interchange, is the format used by generic text files. GINT is a geotechnical database. LAS, or Log ASCII standard, is a common format for storing downhole geophysical and geotechnical well information. XLS, or Excel, is another common format that we encounter with existing projects. During installation, it is possible to define the native RockWorks data format as either MDB or SQL. This means that RockWorks users can manipulate or create RockWorks databases outside of the RockWorks program. For example, many of our clients have added capabilities to their large legacy systems for exporting data subsets to RockWorks MDB or SQL tables. All file formats used or created by RockWorks are non-proprietary or open, meaning that you won't be painted into a corner. MDB is the default format when installing the product. SQL requires more effort in terms of configuring the server when installing RockWorks, but it's well worth the effort for large projects. Now before I get into the plume modeling, I need to clarify some terminology. One-dimensional data refers to data that has one independent variable and one dependent variable. For example, if you're sampling water levels at a given well over time, we can think of the date time as the independent variable and the water level as the dependent variable. For any given time, there can be one and only one water level. Notice that the converse does not apply. This data can be plotted as a two-dimensional graph or a three-dimensional or pseudo three-dimensional diagram. Now two-dimensional data refers to data that has two independent variables and one dependent variable. For example, Consider a data set that consists of Eastings, Northings, and surface elevations. The Eastings and Northings are the independent variables, while elevation is the dependent variable. For any given XY coordinate, there can be one and only one Z value. A surface can never bend underneath itself. 
Modeling two-dimensional data typically involves an imaginary grid in which a value is estimated at the center of each cell based on the surrounding control points. This grid is then color-coded in order to create a contour map. The grid may also be presented as a three-dimensional surface. Some call this a 2.5D model. Finally, we come to true 3D data, in which we typically have XYZ as our independent variables and a G or grade value as the dependent variable. This G value is typically geochemistry. It could be geophysical data and it could be geotechnical data, but most typically it's geochemistry. Modeling 3D data typically involves the creation of a three-dimensional block model in which the cells or voxels are estimated by looking at the surrounding control points. To display subsurface geochemistry, we can create a two-dimensional contour map. This approach is suitable for geological environments in which there is horizontal but no vertical variation within the subsurface geochemistry. On the other hand, a contaminant plume that is truly three-dimensional cannot be viewed via two-dimensional modeling or diagrams based on these models. Alternatively, three-dimensional models and their derivative diagrams can be used to show vertical as well as horizontal geochemical variations. Now as I mentioned before, 3D block models are created by superimposing an imaginary 3D matrix to the project area and estimating values at the center of each cell, or voxel, by examining the surrounding control points, which are derived from the downhole information. We can color code these voxels, as shown in the diagram in the upper right, or display the data as three-dimensional skins or isosurfaces, as shown by this diagram on the lower left. Notice how contaminants within two unconnected aquifers can be shown by the diagram on the lower right. This type of geometry is not possible with two-dimensional modeling. Block models may be vertically sliced in order to generate two-dimensional cross-sections. In this example, we're showing the geochemistry within a given aquifer as color-coded contours. The aquifer is confined between hydrostratigraphic units. By projecting these sections into a 3D environment, we can create a fence diagram that shows the lateral and vertical variations for a given parameter, such as geochemistry, or a geotechnical property, such as soil compaction or cohesion. Rockworks allows the user to specify a cutoff value that causes all voxels below this level to become invisible, thereby showing the outline of a plume. In this example, We've also included borehole diagrams in which the geochemistry is displayed as color-coded cylinders whose radii are proportional to the geochemical value for each corresponding interval. By adjusting the transparency of the plume model, we can see into the model to make sure that the model is reasonably approximating the actual data. Let's look at some more examples. Here's a geochemical fence combined with a plume and some geochemical logs. Here's an example from Southern California showing the stratigraphy within a sediment-filled paleo canyon as a fence diagram combined with a geochemical plume as shown by this orange blob. A more useful technique for visualizing migrating or changing plumes requires that the user create separate models for each sampling interval. These models are then morphed into a dynamic diagram that can be saved as an AVI file for inclusion within PowerPoint or a website. When you are adjusting the ISO level value for a block model, notice the item labeled volume adjacent to the ISO level slider bar. This volume number will change as the ISO level is changed, thereby showing the volume of the contaminant plume. This volume number is expressed in cubic units for whatever units your original data was stored in. Okay, that's it for the Part 1 overview. Please select the Part 2 option from the previous menu to see the results of a recently completed case study in contaminant plume modeling. Thank you.